Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. We just wrapped up a cabinet retreat here in Ottawa to map out our plan to keep Canadians safe and healthy while building a more resilient Canada. Canada and the world continues to face the ongoing threat of the global pandemic. Over the last few months, we've learned that we can never let our guard down. The fight against COVID-19 is far from over, so we must stay focused on the task ahead. We need to rebuild our economy while keeping Canadians safe. These two goals are not mutually exclusive. They go together. Healthier Canadians will mean and have already meant a healthier and stronger economy. And on that front, today, we took yet another step forward. Through the Safe Restart Agreement, reached earlier this summer, we announced federal funding to help provinces and territories safely restart the economy. Provinces and territories were asked to outline in a letter just how these funds would be best allocated within their jurisdictions based on their priorities. The Premiers have now submitted those letters, which will allow over $19 billion in federal funding to flow towards our shared work to protect Canadians as we safely restart the economy. Kids are now going back to school, and as a dad, I get how parents are worried. Last month, we announced the Safe Return to Class Fund to help protect kids and staff with an extra $2 billion for the provinces. Keeping our kids safe must always be our top priority. Plus tôt cet été, nous avions demandé aux provinces ou aux territoires de nous soumettre une lettre indiquant comment ils comptaient se servir des fonds du cadre de relance sécuritaire en se basant sur leurs priorités. Tous les premiers ministres ont maintenant envoyé leur lettre. Cet investissement fédéral de plus de 19 milliards de dollars aidera donc à protéger les Canadiens pour continuer de rouvrir l'économie de manière sécuritaire. Le nombre de cas augmente un peu partout au pays et dans le monde pendant que les enfants retournent à l'école. Je veux donc demander aux Canadiens de continuer à faire attention et de suivre les recommandations de la santé publique. Limitez vos interactions en personne. Prenez les précautions nécessaires pour réduire les risques d'exposition afin que vous et votre famille puissent rester en sécurité et télécharger l'application du gouvernement pour vous protéger et protéger vos amis et voisins. Chaque effort compte. Lors des derniers jours, la retraite du Conseil des ministres a été très chargée. C'était l'occasion de nous réunir afin de continuer à développer notre approche face à ce nouveau monde dans lequel nous vivons. Cette approche, nous la présenterons en détail aux Canadiens la semaine prochaine lors du discours du trône. Il faut continuer de soutenir les Canadiens qui en ont besoin durant cette crise. La pandémie a accentué plusieurs des inégalités qui existent encore dans notre société. Nous devons saisir l'occasion de cette relance économique pour construire un Canada plus sain et plus sécuritaire. Un Canada juste et inclusif, un Canada propre et compétitif. On Monday, the COVID-19 Immunity and Vaccine Task Forces provide cabinet, provided Cabinet with an update on their important work. Dr. Tam also shared her thoughts on where we are in the fight against this virus and what we need to work on in the coming months. We also heard from Charlene Stewart the president of the SEIU Healthcare Union, who spoke about the challenges ahead this fall and winter for long-term care, with a particular focus on how we must support those extraordinary workers who keep our elders safe and healthy. Je suis aussi content de confirmer que nous avons accepté la demande du Québec de prolonger la mission de la Croix-Rouge canadienne dans les CHSLD au Québec. Nous avons été présents dès le début avec les Forces armées canadiennes et maintenant avec la Croix-Rouge, et nous sommes heureux de pouvoir continuer à appuyer nos aînés. Last weekend, a number of countries in Europe and around the world reported record daily increases of new cases. We're not immune to those trends. 
Here in Canada, we're seeing cases rise in many parts of the country, too. As everybody knows by now, each new case has the potential to multiply and create even more cases. So we're not out of the woods. This is why I'm asking Canadians to continue to be very careful and follow public health recommendations. Limit the in-person close contacts that you have. Take appropriate precautions to reduce the risk of exposure and keep yourself and your family safe. And make sure you download the COVID Alert app. These efforts help protect our grandparents, our parents, our frontline workers and vulnerable people in our communities. We have to show solidarity to keep each other safe. We've come too far to give up now. Together, Canadians must stay strong and vigilant. This afternoon, I also want to talk about jobs. Lots of people are back at work, and that's good news. But I know that there are lots more people who are still struggling. And there are many others who are worried that they could lose their jobs in these uncertain times. If that's you, know that your government will continue to be here to support you. This pandemic has highlighted many of the inequalities that still exist in our society. More than ever, we need an economy that benefits all Canadians. During this retreat and over the weeks and months to come, that's exactly what our government will stay focused on. Afin de bâtir un Canada résilient, notre économie doit être forte et tous les Canadiens doivent pouvoir en profiter. Notre pays doit continuer d'être bien positionné sur la scène internationale afin d'attirer des investissements et des talents de partout à travers le monde. Pour discuter de ce à quoi il faut s'attendre cet automne et de, de, de la place du Canada dans la relance économique mondiale et dans la lutte contre la COVID-19, nous nous sommes entretenus avec l'ambassadeur Ray, l'ambassadeur Barton et l'ambassadrice Hillman. Hier, l'administration américaine a reculé dans sa décision d'imposer des tarifs injustes sur l'aluminium canadien. C'est une très bonne nouvelle pour nos deux pays et pour les travailleurs de l'aluminium de chez nous. Quand vient le temps de défendre nos travailleurs et nos intérêts économiques, que ce soit pour l'aluminium ou pour tout autre secteur, nous nous tiendrons toujours debout. Aluminum trade between Canada and the United States has long been good for people on both sides of the border. It supports jobs and it grows our economies. Yesterday's decision by the U.S. administration to remove unjustified tariffs on Canadian aluminum was the right thing to do. I want to thank Minister Freeland, Minister Ng, and Ambassador Hillman for their hard work on this important issue. Our government will always stand up for Canadian workers. Yesterday, I also had a call with Chancellor Merkel of Germany. We talked about the global response to COVID-19 from vaccine plans to our experiences with back to school. We also discussed smart ways to grow our economies going forward in what has become a more unstable world. And we both reiterated our condemnation of the poisoning of Russian opposition figure Alexei Navalny. On the world stage, Canada will continue to work with our G7 allies and other international partners to come up with bold solutions to the challenges we face. And here at home, we will continue to work closely with provinces, territories, municipalities, indigenous peoples and businesses to drive the most important economic recovery of our generation. Canadians deserve an ambitious plan for a healthier and safer Canada. A Canada that's fair and inclusive. A Canada that's clean and competitive. And with the speech from the throne on September 23rd, that's exactly what our government is ready to do.